This is the new Sony 20 to 70 millimeter F4. And in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing this lens from the perspective of a wedding filmmaker and telling you if it's a good choice for you to purchase if you're wanting a lens for filming weddings or documentaries, etc. And because I respect your time, I'm also going to spoil the conclusion of this review right now by saying that this lens is fantastic for gimbal work. If you need a lightweight lens that you can balance on a gimbal easily while also giving you a great zoom range. In short, if you're looking to buy your first lens for a Sony camera, I think this is a great choice. Now, that said, I'm sure you want more details than that, so please keep watching the rest of this video. I just want you to know that this video isn't paid or sponsored by Sony, and the first time that they see it is the first time that you see it whenever it is uploaded to YouTube. Starting off the review then, the first thing that you're gonna notice about this lens is that it is tiny. It's a great companion to Sony's other new F4 lens, the 16 to 35 F4, which is also just a cute little baby of a lens. This 20 to 70 is not only small though, it's also lightweight at only 488 grams. For context, one of my favorite lightweight lenses is the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 GM, and I'm using that to film this video right now. And this 24 millimeter lens is only 445 grams. So it's pretty crazy to be able to see a zoom lens with this focal range be only barely heavier. As a wedding filmmaker that carries around a camera all day for at least eight hours, but oftentimes 12 or more hours at a time, I'm a huge fan of lightweight lenses. So if you find your arms getting tired on a wedding day, this lens may help with that. Also, like I said at the start of this video, this lens is also going to be great for gimbal work. It's really lightweight, so pretty much any gimbal these days is going to be able to handle it. I do want you to be aware that the lens barrel does extend pretty far when zooming in, but it's still really lightweight and you probably will not need to worry about it messing with the balance of your gimbal too much if you zoom in and out while using it. Speaking of zooming here, the focal length of this lens is one of the things that is most compelling about it. Because where we've seen a lot of competition in this focal length space with basically every single camera manufacturer out there creating a 24 to 70 millimeter lens or something that's the equivalent of that and a lot of more budget friendly manufacturers like Sigma making a 28 to 70 millimeter lens or Tamron making a 28 to 75 millimeter lens. Sony has chosen to go in the opposite direction of a lot of their competition and opted to make this lens wider rather than tighter. They chose to stay at 70 millimeters on the tight end, but make the wide end an even wider 20 millimeters, which to be clear, it's only a four millimeter difference between 20 and 24 millimeters. But whenever you start getting into that ultra wide category of lenses, even a few millimeters can make a huge difference in how wide your shot looks and feels. That brings us back to this lens being perfect for gimbal work. As I said earlier, I'm a huge fan of Sony's 24 millimeter lens, and that is the lens that is on my gimbal the most. But I know that many other filmmakers usually prefer a wider lens for their gimbal, something like a 16 to 35 millimeter, which is great, don't get me wrong, but with that 16 to 35, you lose some of the versatility of being able to zoom in tight when you need to. Because let's face it, 35 millimeters is still pretty wide. So this 20 to 70 lens provides a really interesting middle ground where it's really in the Goldilocks zone where it's not quite as wide as 16 millimeters, but it's definitely wider than 24 millimeters. And I gotta say, I oftentimes think that 16 millimeters is a bit too wide for gimbal work, at least in my opinion, but 20 millimeters looks pretty dang good. Heck, I remember renting a Sigma 20 millimeter lens to film a wedding because I wasn't sure if I wanted to film wider than 24 or not with my gimbal. And while I loved that 20 millimeter focal length, the weight of that Sigma lens was exhausting. Couple that with the fact that I was using a glide cam at the time instead of an electronic gimbal, so I had to hold everything one handed. And you can probably understand why that 20 millimeter was almost killing me. With this Sony 20 to 70 though, you can have that wider angle while also not dealing with heavier weight, plus having the versatility of a zoom too. That leads us into the next part of this review though, because I'm sure that you're thinking now or possibly preparing to furiously type on your keyboard, Matt, the reason this lens is lighter is that it's only an F4. That Sigma 20 millimeter you tried was F1.4. That's a huge difference. And you're right, but here's where things get interesting because for me as a wedding filmmaker, when I'm using my gimbal, unless it's super dark and I'm filming a reception exit, 90% of the time when I have my Sony 24 millimeter lens on my camera, I'm not using it at F1.4. I'm not even close. 
I'm like F2, F2.8, F4, F5.6, because for gimbal work, you're not usually looking for an extremely shallow depth of field. You want more things to be in focus. So yes, this lens is an F4, but I would not necessarily let that deter you. But the low light, Matt, the low light. Okay, and I hear you there too. You're right, some weddings can be really dark, which is why I've always recommended that you invest in some prime lenses that can handle darker conditions. But that said, I have filmed weddings before with F4 lenses. And in fact, the first wedding that I ever filmed with the Sony a7S III, I filmed with a 24 to 105 at F4. And it was fine because that camera is so good in low light and I was able to compensate for that F4 lens when filming a pretty dark wedding reception. Heck, I was filming the bride and groom cut the cake with that 24 to 105 at F4 and my ISO was set to 40,000. It was totally usable. So my point here is that an F4 aperture is not as bad as it used to be because camera sensors have gotten so much better in low light. Of course though, if you're filming with something like a Sony FX30, which to be clear has decent low light performance, but is still a crop sensor, that camera can't even hit ISO 40,000. So I would avoid trying to do that. And in your case, I would probably look for a lens that's at least F2.8, if not F1.4. But overall, I think that Sony had a decision to make of whether they wanted this lens to be a really compact and cute F4 or a gigantic F2.8, because I'm betting that they could have made this lens an F2.8 lens, but whenever you start dealing with that 24 to 70 focal range at F2.8 or even wider, the lenses start to get bigger and beefier in size and weight. Anyways, one last note about the width of this lens. While I am not somebody that vlogs often, whenever I was talking to Sidney Deongson about this lens, which if you don't follow him on YouTube, he is fantastic. I will link him down in the description. The first use case that Sydney immediately thought of was vlogging because Oftentimes, whenever you vlog, you want a very wide angle lens that will enable you to hold your camera out in front of you while you are filming. Traditionally, vloggers have gravitated toward wide angles like a 16 to 35, which is great. But if you're looking for a lens that can get close to that at 20 millimeter, while also giving you a lot more versatility on the tight end, they'll work for way more things than just vlogging. That's where this 20 to 70 millimeter really shines. So yeah, if you wanna vlog, check this lens out. Next, on to other features of this lens. Sony says that it is dust and moisture resistant, which is great. And just like all of Sony's newer lenses, it has many of the features that you would come to expect and love, like an aperture control ring with a switch to make a click list, which is amazing for video, an autofocus manual focus toggle switch, programmable buttons, and all those other nice new Sony lens features. Also in my testing, as I'm sure you've been able to see from the test footage, this lens is quite sharp at F4 and I think it looks great. Another keynote too, this lens also has very good focus breathing performance where you can see a little bit, but it is very minimized, especially compared to other Sony lenses. So if you rack focus your shots a lot, you are going to love this. And especially if you pair it with the Sony lens breathing compensation feature on their newer cameras, you shouldn't be dealing with focus breathing at all. Speaking of focus, I'm also very pleased to tell you that this lens has very fast autofocus performance and it is very close to par focal, meaning that if you have it set to manual focus and you've zoomed out at 20 millimeters and then you zoom in all the way to 70 millimeters, the subject that you were filming is going to stay in focus. This is rare for lenses to support these days, so I'm really happy to see it. Also, in regards to focus, this lens has a really great minimum focusing distance as well, where it's not quite macro, but it's pretty close. Unlike some other lenses that I've tested that feel like you have to be pretty far away before you can get focus, with this lens, you can be about 10 inches away and still focus. Now, what about the price? Sony has told me that this lens is going to retail for $1,099. And in an area where it feels like so many lenses are $2,000 or more these days, it's a bit refreshing to see this price point closer to 1,000 than 2,000. But, the age old question, should you buy it? I'll make this decision simple for you. If you are a brand new wedding filmmaker and you're looking for your first lens to purchase that will be very versatile and you also just bought a gimbal and you're needing a lens that's gonna work great on the gimbal as well, I think this new Sony 20 to 70 is a very versatile choice that's gonna work great on a gimbal, great handheld, and give you a lot of flexibility when filmmaking. 
Speaking of flexibility when filmmaking, if you're a wedding filmmaker like me, you gotta be flexible and use YouTube to promote yourself and your business. To help you out with that, I've put together a free guide called YouTube for Wedding Filmmakers. This guide is gonna help you get more views, subscribers, and bookings on YouTube, and you can check it out at the link down in the video description. With that, I'm Matt Johnson, your bearded bro with wide aperture facial hair, whatever that means. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.